I got the energy. I got the will to survive. I got the energy. It was so spectacular. I got the energy. Energy. I got energy. Energy. That's right. Joining us now, a 12-year NBA vet, a champ, an all-star. But really, the podcast right now is the thing that is blowing up. Jeff Teague joins us. And Jeff, I want to get right off the bat because I know you and Lou were teammates at one point. I need a story about Lou before Lou gives us a story about you. Go. No, Lou was always the coolest dude in the room. Uh, still the coolest dude in the room. So... <laughs> Some of the stories I can't tell about me and Luke, man. We had some good times. Thank that. you, Jeff. And and <laughs> and the feeling is mutual. I have no stories. Oh as well. come, on. you guys are. I have yeah. no stories That's as well. Not how TV works. <laughs> nothing. Nah, oh, I got fine. I got nothing PG enough. We could share. It's early in the morning. It's, it's We've basically had some time, night. Though. We've had some time. Okay. Jeff, <laughs> give, 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 give us one good Lou moment as a teammate, because I never played with Lou. I, w I feel like me he's and Lou would have been great teammates, but give us... No, Lou is bad teammate, because he's thrown us under the bus already, and we've been on this show for two minutes. You gotta let that go. You no, gotta I'll let that never heal, let Michelle. Go. You gotta let that heal. Is he a good teammate or a mm, teammate? Nah, he's the best teammate. He's, he's definitely top three of my teammates. That's what I'm talking about, dog. Yeah, appreciate, hey, appreciate. That's the first time I heard that too. That might be for wow. TV, but thank you, bro. <laughs> nah, appreciate that. I tell everybody that we had a segment on our show about you. That's what's I was up. Telling everybody, yeah. That's what's up. Top three. I wonder who the other two were. Who are the other two? Yeah. Kyle Corver. He was a great teammate. And Al Horford. Oh, oh that's that's uh, good company right there. All right. Two good. amazing teammates. Yeah, that's that's fire. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, we talked earlier about the hack of Drummond that mm. went on in Boston last mm -hmm. night. You know, even though they were up 30 points or whatever they were up, if you were on the Bulls, though, how upset would you have been last night? I wouldn't have been mad. I mean, you got to make free throws. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. You could have had 20 points. <laughs> but e even, you know, sticking with this whole in-season tournament thing, the Hawks pulled their starters mm. last night and the Cavs kept theirs in, kind of running up the score. Is that just something now you, you deal with because it's the new norm, or is that, is that get under your skin? I mean, you're probably going to remember it, but it's the norm now. I mean, they're trying to win. They're trying to find themselves it's still kind of early in the season. So, I mean, I ain't really mad at them. I mean, I'm a high school coach now, so I'm trying to run up the scope. <laughs> that's me. I see. I don't never understood the sensitivity about running. That's the whole point, I thought. But then there's yeah. there's the dream on green of it all. He was, he was back from his suspension last night and just then gets a T in the fourth quarter. It riles up the Sacramento crowd, as it should. Um, but we, we've been asking the guys this morning, at this point, is what Draymond does causing more harm than good? Oh, look, I love Draymond. So I'm going to ride with Draymond. Uh, whatever he got going on, they champions. They're going to figure it out. But, uh, I mean, they just said they always go through a rough patch in the year at the beginning of the year, these last couple of years. So I think they'll figure it out. Do you think there will ever, because that seems to be the, the answer that people give, right? They love Draymond, and so for that reason, he kind of gets the pass. But will there ever come a day where it's just too much? For example, the chokehold. For you, what was your opinion on the chokehold <laughs> scene around the world? Uh, it, it was funny to me. He, <laughs> hey, he hell, man. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Bro, crazy. But <laughs> I wouldn't have did it, but... Uh, I understand why he did it. They had a little past history, so he thought it was his moment, and he took advantage of it. I mean, it cost him in the end, but shit, it was funny. It was good TV for me. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like no one, no one has Rudy's back. Um, Jimmy Butler didn't play last night, but you were in Minnesota with him, and of course, there's the infamous practice that was legendary <laughs> uh, as far as taking on Cat and the rest of that team, the starters. You were there. I know it's been a minute, but it's still one of my favorite stories. What happened? Uh, he, uh, he just had a moment in practice where he was killing. And uh, he wasn't really scoring. He was just making everybody better. And he was letting the GM and everybody know about it. And I just kind of appreciated it because I ain't never seen somebody talk to the GM like that. And I was like, hey, that's kind of hard. I need that kind of pull. And it never happens. <laughs> it never happened for me. So when I actually got some pull, they was trading me, so it was over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you, you've been in the league a long time, and everybody knows how, how documented we, we were just speaking about the cat and the Jimmy drama. Is that one of the better beefs that you've seen in the league? 
that you've been a part of? It wasn't really beef because Cat wasn't trying to beef with him. Like, Cat, Cat was more <laughs> like trying to fall in line with him, but uh, it, it, I can't really see. You know how it worked. It was like, Cat, go to the front office, Jimmy, go to you. So it's different. <laughs> like, yeah. it ain't really no beef. Nick, so Cat, for whatever reason, gets a lot of disrespect from players, fans. You played with him. Is, is mm-hmm. why? Why is that? Like, why does that keep happening to him? I don't know, cause he's one of the best players in the league. I think it's cause he changed his voice in his interviews. So. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, for real, bro. I think people think he make himself like, a, he make himself an easy target by doing stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts, bro. But he really cold. Like I told you before, I think he's one of the best players in the league. People thought I was crazy, and I was like, he remind me of, he ain't as tall as, tall as Wimby, but like his skill set, when I first met him, he was doing all that stuff. Hmm. But I think he just get a bad rap for stuff like that off the court. You, you, uh, you always, I mean, you recently said that there's nobody worse than a Minnesota Timberwolves fan. <laughs> no, I ain't say that, bro. <laughs> That's why we're here. Let's, clean, let's clean everything up. That's what my notes say. Let's, let's clean everything up. Yeah, that's what? what they said about it. They don't like me. So, in the future. Got it, got it, got it. You now, should, I mean, you should know that. Well, I, think, I think the Memphis Grizzly fans are right up there with them. Fair but. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got their own personal experience, I guess. I, so I gotta, I gotta ask because recently we saw Scott Foster and, and CP go through that thing, but you've also had your thing with, with CP and you, you've expressed it on your podcast, Club Five Twenty. By the way, everybody check check out Jeff's uh, podcast. What what started what started that with you and CP? I don't got beef with CP. It's just like you know, you go to Wake Forest and you kind of look at him as a mentor, and. It just you just didn't get that love no more once you got in the league, but I understood it. Like it's competition. Hmm. But after that, he just kinda like with little bro me and I'm like, bro, I ain't really had no big I got a real big brother, he ain't gonna keep little bro on me, bro. Like <laughs> you only like a couple years older than me. Right. So I just didn't appreciate that kind of stuff he had to me, so kinda came like that, bro. Not your bro, bro. That's, uh, not your bro, bro. No, that's yeah. fair. See Lou? Clear, clearing that up. Uh, 2016, playing for the Hawks. You got LeBron and the Cavs on the other side of things. Eastern Conference <laughs> semis. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a, I guess it's a body check. I'll call it a body check. Right. Yeah, no, I, call, I count it. What I happened here? Jeff, you would have got 10 games if this was 2003 <laughs> for that. Look, I ain't get nothing. I ain't get a fine or nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you would have got 10 games for that show. That's your limitations. On LeBron? Yeah. So you would have good enough. Oh, uh, yeah. Dray- Draymond would have been proud of you, it's, boy. It's assault these days. I, I was out of pocket, bro. I was <laughs> out of pocket. Oh. Why'd you do it? Uh, I was hating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. They, you know how Atlanta is. They cheer for him. I said, man, hell no. Nah. I knew this was my last game for the Hawks, though, by the way, so I was like, cool. Oh, that's you, you left with a bag? <laughs> that's legend. Oh, uh, definitely. Okay, that's fair. I knew it was my last one, too. I'm out. But, but seriously, Jeff, you guys were the best regular season team. I know one year. You guys had, like, what, four mm-hmm. starting lineup was, was, was in the All-Star game together one year? Yeah. Do you feel like you guys should have won a championship? Obviously, LeBron James came in the way, but did you, do you feel like you guys should have won the ring one of these years? Hmm. I'm going to say I thought we could have made it to the finals. I thought we could beat LeBron and them, but everybody started getting hurt. And then LeBron, being the player he is, he just started figuring this out. He like, Jeff T can't guard me one-on-one. I'm just going to make him guard me, pick and roll. And it was over with. Mm. Yeah, uh, Jeff, there's been a few players. There's actually been a lot of players that have had my numbers that just always bust my ass. Who was that one guy that, for whatever reason, would just cook you every time? Shit, uh, the list is long. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You play long enough, you gonna have a long. Who's list like a, like, who's like a weird one? Like who, like who I've shouldn't play to be a defender either? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, all the great ones they gave me buckets. I mean, shit, Lou gave me buckets. You give everyone buckets. I'm a bucket. I'm, <laughs> I'm a bucket. bucket. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. I remember one year we uh, the pro am. Uh, in Atlanta, and you went against Jerry Jack. I came and watched in the stands, and y'all was going back and forth. Y'all was arguing, and you was just playing with your homeboys. They had a home NBA squad, <laughs> <laughs> and you had like 55. We got a, it was my pro am team. We, we, like, we rigged uh, up. They just passed the ball until I shoot. 
That's, that's it? That's just how we play. Hey, but y'all beat him, though. Yeah, we're going to beat him every time. Though. See? I was like, yeah, he did. That's different. great. Yeah, you don't have to make it that. It's not that complicated. Um, Lou surprised us the other day. He said that Kawhi was one of the three funniest players uh, that he's ever played with. Is there a player that you've played with that's either really misunderstood or maybe we've just gotten completely wrong? Uh... I think Andrew Wiggins is really funny. I mean, he doesn't talk much, but if you get to know him, he's a super funny guy. Hmm. Uh, Tyus Jones is hilarious. Tyus Jones. Tyus Jones. It's a good one. Wouldn't guess that. He's really? hilarious. Yeah, what, like he, what makes him funny? All the because their personalities, they just quiet, they reserved, and people don't get a, get to, get an opportunity to see their personality. So when just you mumbling. get them yeah. behind the scenes and yeah. in situations they where they're comfortable, yeah, they they just let loose. I know, yeah, I like he that. jokes. That's how, that's how Kawhi is. Like behind closed doors, he runs the show. We'll never know. We'll never know. Church <laughs> turn, Lou. So look, <laughs> you're up. <laughs> my, my bad. You've known. You've been known to trash talk a little bit. Do I? That's what they say. I was trying to tell okay. them that you was, you was quiet. You might get upset sometimes, and you might trip like that's the better. like like the LeBron push. <laughs> who's 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 the most annoying person? Oh wow. I got a, I got a couple because we done been in some battles together. But who's the most annoying person you would say that's trash talking on the court? Uh, the most annoying was probably Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> <laughs> he was. I know you got a story, Lou. <laughs> but, that's for us. I'm gonna leave that alone. Yeah. No, no, no. We gonna <laughs> nah, <Sean. laughs> nah, We gonna leave that alone. <laughs> But oh, Jeff and Jeff and Dennis, they had they had the, they had their little thing going on in practice a lot, man. Competitive spirit. Yeah, he that's was supposed all. to know it. You know it's bad when he's when he's when he's saying one of his teammates. <laughs> <laughs> we were looking for like a Pat <laughs> Bev, someone you played against. Someone else. You went with your nah, back. He was, <laughs> nah, he was annoying, man. But I mean, that's that's what make him him, man. He's a competitor, but he definitely was annoying. Did I you mean, play Pat against? Bev, did you play against Prime KG? Oh. Hey, man, he was crazy. <laughs> KG that would say, on all fours one oh, time would say some things to you on the floor. Wait, Personal. What? He did what? Got on all fours and barked at me in a playoff game. <laughs> I said, dude, crazy. Dude ain't got it out, man. That's amazing. Jeff, speaking of KG, That's... he recently said some crazy comments that Jordan Poole oh, yeah. doesn't belong in the NBA. <laughs> he tripped. Yeah. Now, nah, I mean, Jordan Poole, he, he's still cold. He's just having a bad moment right now. But... He deserves to be in the league. Right. I mean, I get what KG talking about. You know, he's more passionate about stuff. Oh, man. Uh-oh, tech. Technology kicking in. We got it. No. Uh -oh. oh, no. Who's that? Is that us? Is he gone? Did we lose him? He got, we lost him to a FaceTime. We lost oh. him. I bet somebody, Schroeder, I bet somebody called him. Schroeder is called Dennis <laughs> called <laughs> Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder on line yeah. one. By the way, I don't think that's ever happened where you ask somebody about so, Luke, a trash talker. <laughs> you you might have been there. Maybe you – what happened between Dennis Schroeder yeah. and Jeff T? No, well, Jeff was the starting point guard. Dennis is coming yeah. over from, from Germany. Um, Dennis had quite the reputation in Germany. We didn't really, we weren't really. What kind from, of reputation? Well, a good one. Well, he was a pro already. Oh, great one. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. So we didn't really, we didn't really know who he was, uh, know much about him, and he just had this thing with Jeff, and you know they were just dueling. He wanted, he wanted Jeff's job, and Jeff wasn't going oh, for well, it. Oh, that's fair. And it just created, just created some competitive energy in the gym. That's all. I can honestly say though, did not expect the teammate to be the answer. That was. I, I, I knew for a fact he was going to say Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> that's why I kind of laughed. That's but. amazing. By the way, you want to check out Jeff's podcast. He does have, he's got the stories. Um,